Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the second video for Chapter 2, Section 1 in your Pearson Trigonometry textbook. We are continuing our discussion of the trigonometric values, the trigonometric functions of acute angles. So at the end of the first video, we did this example where we found the sine, cosine, and tangent of both angles in a right triangle, angle A and angle B, both of the acute angles. And I pointed out that there was a relationship between the sine of A the cosine of A, the tangent of A, and the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle B. So take a minute, look at the red and blue numbers down here, and note what patterns you see. Notice how the sine of angle A is the same as the cosine of angle B. That the cosine of angle A is the same as the, same as the sine of angle B. And that the tangents are, in fact, uh, reciprocals of each other. There is a reason for this, and we're going to discuss that in this video. So... First of all, in any right triangle, the two acute angles must be complementary angles. Remember that we have in our notes already for this year the rule that states from geometry that the three angles in any triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. Well, if one of those angles is 90 degrees, the other two angles also have to add up to 90 degrees so that all three angles, when, when added together, would add up to 180 so what we, what we can state here is that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B is 90 degrees. Now keep in mind that this is an algebraic equation, which means it could also be written as the measure of angle A is 90 minus the measure of angle B, or the measure of angle B is 90 minus the measure of angle A, simply by rearranging the equation using basic algebra. Now what that does is it brings us to um, what are called the cofunction identities. Okay, well here's the deal. Because the measure of angle B is 90 minus the measure of angle A, which we established on the previous screen, this tells us that the sine of one of the acute angles must be equal to the cosine of the other acute angle. In addition, the tangent of one of the acute angles would equal the cotangent of the other angle. And the secant of one of the angles is the cosecant of the other angle. Now let's think about the naming here. Haven't you ever wondered why the trig functions are called sine, cosine, secant, cosecant, tangent, cotangent? This is why. Because the sine of one angle is the cosine of the other angle. The tangent of one angle is the cotangent of the other angle. And the secant of an angle is the cosecant of the other angle. They're related to each other through this idea of complementary angles. So what this creates is a total of six cofunction identities, which will come in useful on occasion. Okay, uh, keeping in mind that because B is 90 minus A, we can substitute 90 minus A in for B, which would give us that the sine of angle A is the cosine of 90 minus angle A, which, by the way, 90 minus A is the other angle, angle B. Okay, we can do this with all six trig functions. For instance, the cosine of angle A would be the sine of angle B, which could be written as 90 minus A. The tangent of angle A is equal to the cotangent of angle B, which is 90 minus A. The cotangent of angle A is the tangent of angle B, which we can write as 90 minus A. The secant of angle A is equal to the cosecant of angle B, which can be written as 90 minus A. And finally, the cosecant of angle A 
is the secant of angle B, which again we can write as 90 minus A. Okay. So those are the identities. Um, you should try to memorize them. However, in my course, you'll never actually have to have them memorized. If you need them, they will be provided to you. It's more important that you are able to use them when the occasion comes up. So we're going to go through some basic um, comprehension style questions first, and then later on we'll look at some applications. So here we go. Starting off with how to write an angle in terms of its co-function, or a, uh, I'm sorry, a trig function in terms of its co-function. So here we have the cosine of 52 degrees. So what we do is we think to ourselves, okay, cosine, what is the co-function with cosine? Well, cosine and sine are related to each other. So we would say, okay, if I'm going to write that in terms of its co-function, that would be the sine of 90 minus 52. Well, the only thing that I can simplify there is I can actually do 90 minus 52, which would give me the co-function, the sine of 38 degrees. Okay, so for letter B here, tangent is a co-function with cotangent. So I do the same sort of thing, 90 minus 71. That would be the cotangent of 19 degrees. And that is written in terms of its co-function. Secant is related to cosecant. So I would do the cosecant of 90 minus 24, which would be the cosecant of 66 degrees. And sine, we already said, was related to cosine. So I'd do the cosine of 90 minus 9, or the cosine of 81 degrees. Pretty straightforward. Again, remember that Sine and cosine are cofunctions. Secant and cosecant are cofunctions. And tangent and cotangent are cofunctions. All right. So then there's this other type of problem that this book enjoys to give us, and that is to, quote, find one solution when it decides to change the page. Find one solution for each equation. Come on, computer. I was really thinking hard about this, which worries me. There it goes. Find one solution for each equation. Assume all involved angles are acute angles. So here we have the cosine of theta plus 4 is equal to the sine of 3 theta plus 2. Notice that sine and cosine are cofunctions. That means that these two angles, this one and this one, when put together, must be complementary. They must add up to 90 degrees because they're cofunctions. So what we do is we say, okay, Theta plus 4, and if theta makes you uncomfortable, you can rewrite that as any variable. Just generally in higher math, the Greek letters represent unknown angle measures. If you want to change it to x, feel free. It's fine. Plus 3 theta plus 2 equals 90 degrees. And from there, that is a very simple algebraic equation. We add like terms. So 1 theta plus 3 theta is 4 theta plus 4 plus 2 is 6, equals 90. We subtract 6 from each side, which gives us 4 theta equals 84. And then we divide by 4, which gives us theta is 21 degrees. Now, if we want to be sure we're correct, we could take that and plug it back in up above. Theta plus 4 would be 25 degrees. 
3 theta plus 2 would be 65 degrees. 25 and 65 are complementary angles, so our answer is correct. Same idea here on number 2. Just another example. Tangent and cotangent are cofunctions, which means that these two angles must be complementary. So we say, okay, 2 theta minus 18 plus theta plus 18 equals 90. Add like terms gives us 3 theta equals 90 because the 18 and the negative 18 would cancel each other out. Divide by 3 and we get theta is 30 degrees. Again, you could plug that back in up above. You would get that the two angles up above are 42 and 48 degrees, which are complementary, meaning we are probably correct. That will do it for this video. Our next video in this section will discuss more information that we should have already known from geometry on these special right triangles, and it will create a reference item for us for our three major acute angles, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. It will also wrap up section one.